Hey up now then, I hope you're all good. My name's Dave K, and you are watching the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good week. And it's the 1st of December today. So that means Christmas carols on the radio right up until Christmas. Just what we wanted. Right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to fit a light to this Trek rail that I've got here at the side of me on the stand. And we're going to wire it directly into the wiring loom. So it will use the battery that's installed in the bike and not a separate battery. And it can be switched on and off via the head unit on the left hand side. It's fairly straightforward to do. It's something that you can do at home. There's a little bit of messing about, a little bit of soldering to do. But if you're quite competent at stuff like that, it should be easy for you to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the bits that we need to be able to do this. So we'll move back over to the bench. So this is the uh, the tools that we're actually going to need to be able to do this job. We've obviously got us light here, um, which I'll unbox in a second. We've got uh, a small soldering iron, which is mains fed. We've got some uh, solder there, some snips so we can cut us cable, some heat shrink tubing so we can, uh, when, we've, when we've soldered the cables, we can put that on and make it watertight. And we've got a heat shrink gun which we're going to need to be, to be able to make those shrink over the cables. So let's unbox this light and let's have a look, see what we've got. So, like I said before, Magic Shine have actually improved quite a lot um, in their lighting systems. Took a bit of getting out, didn't it? Okay, so we're here, here's the, the light that fits on the handlebar. Okay. It's quite a small unit. Um, quite a powerful one though. It's a 906S, uh, which is 200 to 4,500 lumens. So it's quite a powerful little thing. It comes with this plug on the end, this jack plug on the end. Uh, which is when you buy the adapter uh, from Magic Shine, you plug that in and then you wire the other end, uh, you solder the other end into the wiring loom of the bike. But because we've not got that bit, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to cut this off. Now, on adapters like this, on power adapters, jacks like this, you usually find that the centre is the positive side and the outer shield is the negative side. So it's important that you actually get this right and you wire it in the right way into your bike. Um, you need to check the specifications. If it's not a magic shine light and you're having to cut this off, then you need to find the specifications. You need to double check to make sure that that centre is either positive or negative and vice versa just to make sure that you're actually not going to blow your light or damage your bike uh, there's some fittings here to fit it to the handlebar we've got some straps there uh, and a garmin like fitting that we can actually fasten to the handlebar for that light to actually fit on top of just like that okay Right, so let's get back to the bike. So you'll find that it doesn't matter which Trek rail you have, you'll find that inside this battery compartment it'll be identical just about uh, in any Trek rail. You've got five individual cables or wires there at the bottom you can see. Two of these are actually control cables. One of them is for the head unit or the controller on the end of, end of the bar and the other one will be for the light okay now we don't know which one it is at the moment because they disappear under the locking mechanism but we'll move up there and find that out later these are the three we've got one of them will be for the seat post the dropper post if you've got one fitted one will be for the back brake and the other one will be for the gears it'd be the gear cable so okay so we don't really need to touch these three but we need to find out which one is our lighting cable out of these two. And the way we do that basically is we need to take out the locking mechanism at the top end. So let's do that now. So what we've done basically, we've moved up to the top end of the bike 
And you can see the locking mechanism here, which is at the top. And you can see all these cables and wires actually go under this. So what we need to do is we need to, first of all, take this plastic cover off and then take the locking mechanism out of the bike, okay? So what we need to be able to do that, first of all, is these two um, little torque screws under there. You can actually see them, there's one, okay? And there's the other one underneath. We need to remove those two and then the plastic cover will actually come away. So let's do that now. So that's the plastic cover out of the bike. We'll put that to one side so we don't lose it. Now that will reveal to us the locking mechanism there, which all these wires will actually go under there. So it may be that we can actually get to the wire that we need without taking this lock and locking mechanism out. The two wires that, we, that we're concerned with are the, the ones that we need to look at are these two soft control wires here on the right hand side of the cage, of the battery cage. So we can see that there's loads of spare cable on those. So we need to get to the point where we can possibly get to them. Okay, I can feel. Okay, the idea is we need to make them loose. So we can actually, okay, there you go, look. Look, so there's the two wires that we need to be able to fix as light into. We've got a red and a black. Okay, positive and negative. Red being positive, black being negative. Okay, and I can see that it's, uh, it's actually tie wrapped to the control cable there. So let's, let's take this rubber cover out first of all, and then that will allow us to actually move these cables about. Okay. That's the one that we need. That's the one that we, that we need to use, that one just there. So what, is, what we need to do now is we need to take us new light. We need to cut the end off it, like we, like we described, because we've not got an adapter. And then we need to bear the wires for the plus and the minus connector um, inside the wiring. Okay, so there's plenty of cable there for us, plenty of what we need, okay. So let's go back to his light and let's cut that little jack off the end of the light so we can see what we're doing. Right, so what I suggest we do with this is we need to cut this off here, but we need to make sure that we can identify the plus and the minus cables in there. There's only two. One will be plus and one will be minus. But it could be that when these are manufactured, sometimes what they do is the cables, the two cables that are inside here, they sometimes use the same color or one's identified by a little tiny stripe, a white stripe down the middle. Now the, that indicates the positive wire in most cases. So what we need to do is, before we just go ahead and cut this off, uh, we need to carefully expose these wires here so we can identify which one's which, okay? So we don't want just going to snip it off, otherwise we could find that these two wires are exactly the same inside and that way we'll, we'll, not, we'll never find which is plus and which is minus, if that makes sense. So what I'll carefully do is I'll carefully strip, you need to watch your fingers, okay, I'll carefully strip. Now we've got plenty of room uh, here for the cable to go through the, hand, through the port um, on, the, uh, on the right hand side of the bike. So we don't need to worry too much um, about cutting it short. Oh look, there you go. So can you see that? There's the red wire, okay? So what we've got, uh, you can probably guarantee now that this one will either be gray or it'll be black. So what we can do is we know that that red one will be positive and we can test it to double check anyway, and I'll show you how, but you're gonna need an additional piece of kit, which is useful a lot of times. 
which I'll show you. Okay, so one's grey and one's red, as you can see there, okay? Okay, so this continuity tester will confirm that uh, these two wires are actually the same wire. So we know that the centre um, is positive, so we'll just drop that in the centre and we'll just hold it there and we'll just put that on as red wire. Now that beeping confirms to us that this continuity between the centre there, which is the positive and that red wire, if we try it on the black, then we shouldn't get anything at all, which we don't. So we know for definite that the red is actually the positive side of the light, which is what we wanted anyway. We knew that anyway. We've just confirmed that that's the case. So what we can do is we can actually strip this back a little bit very carefully. Taking care not to cut your fingers, we can actually strip this back. Okay, just to expose these cables here. Okay, you don't need too much. Okay, just keep pulling them back a bit just to get some of that outer casing off. Okay, now we just need enough cable to get as, um, as outer sheathing on as um, shrink wrap, which you can see there. So I think that'll probably be enough to cover. So we'll just cut that off there. And we'll just use as snips to just bear these wires. Just so we can actually expose these, these cables, this copper inside so we can tin it with solder. So I've just temporary. So I've just put the light on the handlebar on the mount uh, just to keep that in the same place while we feed the cables back through. So we'll do that now. We'll get them cables back through that, that hole. Uh, and these are watertight now, so we don't need to worry too much. Uh, although that they will keep dry over the top of the battery, um, the battery locking, locking mechanism. Okay, that's back as it should be. Okay, so we've fed the cable through there now. Uh, we didn't need to take the locking mechanism out because uh, we could quite easily manipulate the cables at the back once we've took this plastic cover off the locking plate. We need to put that back now. Um, but first of all, what we'll do is we'll plug it into diagnostics and we'll, we'll enable the light uh, and then we can make sure everything is okay before we put uh, the, uh, the cover back on. So all that's left to do for us now really is to enable the light function uh, within the diagnostics uh, of, the, uh, of the software um, and then the system should actually enable the light to be switched off and on from the head unit. Um, so we'll just wait for it to read the details. Okay. Now the, it says here that the bike light is currently disabled, so we need to enable that. Uh, it can be switched off and on, okay. The lighting output watts needs to be six. Six watts, okay. And uh, we then can then send that back to the bike, wait for it to go back, update itself. Okay, and then if we disconnect the system, uh, the software from the from the bike unplug the cable so we'll switch the bike on okay uh, and when it's booted up we need to keep his finger on the plus button 
That's right, and the light actually lights up, which is what we're trying to do. That's brilliant. So, job's done. Okay, so just to recap, I hope you found that fairly straightforward. Uh, you just need to be careful to find out the polarit polarity of the light whether uh, the centre of the jack plug is positive or negative. Uh, once you know that, then you can splice the cables into the existing uh, wiring loom. We found that cable wire. Uh, there we found that power wire. Uh, once we found that, then uh, it's fairly straightforward. Splice them in, put some shrink wrap on uh, and put them back within the frame. So, um, so yeah, all's good. Uh, and that's how to connect an e-bike light to your e-bike um, please subscribe uh, please like and comment if you want to ask any questions about what we've just done then please just fire away thanks for watching again i'll see you soon total pip